On to today's webinar. Here's your moderator, Kimberly Buster Williams. Thank you. Uh, again, hello, I'm Kimberly Buster Williams, and I'm thrilled to moderate today's session, Skills to Advance in Strategic Enrollment Management. Today you will hear from three seasoned and highly respected SIM professionals who have taken time out of their busy schedules to participate in this webinar. Dr. Christopher Trembley will provide an introduction to ACRO's SIM endorsement program, SIMEP. He will be followed by Dr. Clayton Smith, who will provide an overview of ACRO's upcoming SIM conference. And Dr. Wayne Sigler will wrap things up with a glimpse into ACRO's newest publication, SIM Core Concepts. One housekeeping note, you may type questions in the chat box at any time. We will respond to questions at the end. So, with no further ado, please join me in welcoming our first presenter, Dr. Christopher Trembley. Dr. Trembley currently serves as Director of ACRO's SIM Endorsement Program, while also serving as a Research and Marketing Consultant for Michigan State University's Gifted and Talented Education Program. Christopher? Thank you, Kimberly. It's uh, great to be on the call today uh, to share with all of you information about the SEM endorsement and the program that uh, allows you to earn the endorsement. Uh, the endorsement's been around since 2012, and uh, I'll start by just giving you some background information. Uh, the endorsement program is designed for in-service enrollment professionals, and when we get to the admissions criteria, we'll understand what exactly those requirements are, but this is a professional development opportunity for individuals who have been working in any of the fields within enrollment management to earn a credential um, that would be beyond the bachelor's degree. The mission of uh, the endorsement program really is to produ produce uh, competencies and readiness for those uh, who are interested in moving and advancing into leadership positions within enrollment management. Um, also to develop expertise uh, within the field. Um, this is one of only a few credentials that are available nationally. Um, also to provide an approved curriculum um, that ACRO has developed, and I'll be going through the various aspects of the curriculum uh, in order to earn the endorsement. And then finally, to actually provide a, a formal endorsement of a skill set um, in terms of that recognition. And you'll, again, learn about that uh, in terms of the opportunities for that recognition once you earn the endorsement. Um, just to show you a little bit of a visual representation, um, our graduates uh, of the endorsement um, come to us from 13 different states and two Canadian provinces. Um, so again, our learners span um, all of North America. We also have some international learners that have not yet graduated, but uh, are on track to finish pretty soon. So the admission requirements for SEMEP, uh, the most important requirement is that we're looking for individuals who've been in the field for five years. And what that means is you've been working in admissions, financial aid, the registrar's area, institutional research, enrollment management, or other areas related um, such as you know, retention and student success. Uh, and part of this is so that we um, are enrolling individuals who have a basic knowledge and some experience to tie that knowledge to um, as they're going through the program. Um, the next requirement is the minimum of a bachelor's degree um, from an accredited institution. Um, many of our learners do come already with a master's degree, but the minimum requirement is, again, that baccalaureate degree. We also are looking for individuals who are currently working in the field. Um, it can be part-time or full-time, again, at an accredited uh, college or university, and again, it can be around the world. And then we also ask uh, applicants to provide a copy of their CV, their curriculum vita, or their resume. Um, that's part of verifying the five years of experience, but we also like to see what other experiences um, individuals who are applying to the program have. And then finally, to start the admission process, there's an online admission form using the ACRO system that will verify whether or not you are an ACRO member or a non-ACRO member because the endorsement is available to uh, both audiences. In terms of the cost uh, for the program, there's two ways to look at this. The direct cost um, is the cost of tuition, and that's the price for ACRO members. 
Um, and that includes the Essentials of STEM online course. That course is embedded into our curriculum. And then the additional costs that uh, learners have to consider uh, that are not uh, paid directly to ACRO per se, but um, are options if you decide to travel, let's say, to an ACRO conference, the annual meeting or the STEM conference, um, then you would obviously be responsible for that because that is uh, an option for the field visit. And then the expenses for the field visit, uh, which I'll talk about in a little bit. So the cost for transportation, hotel and meals are up to the learner. Um, but again, the cost for the tuition is pretty reasonable, um, you know, very similar to the cost, probably a little bit less than going to an annual conference. So again, uh, many colleges and universities will cover this cost uh, for the employee to take advantage of this as part of their professional development. And again, it results in a credential um, at the end. I'm going to jump now and talk about the actual curriculum. There's four components uh, that are uh, included. And then I'll finish that up with talking about the two recognition opportunities that come with completion of the endorsement. Um, so the four components, as you see listed there, are the Essentials of STEM online course, some online webinars, field visits, and then a capstone research experience. Um, and typically, most students will start with the Essentials of STEM online course, depending on the time of year that they enroll. And then everybody finishes with the capstone. The field visits and the online webinars can be done uh, based on that person's schedule. So the Essentials of uh, STEM on, uh, online course, this is the only structured part of STEM EP. Um, this is a four-week online course that either runs in September or February. And um, individuals who've already completed this course within the past three years can uh, petition for us to apply the course into their STEM EP curriculum, which means then you've already completed one-fourth of the curriculum and then have the other three components um, left to finish. The online, uh, I should go back here and just mention that the uh, Essentials of STEM online course, so um, that is uh, four weeks um, and usually requires about um, eight hours per week um, in terms of the commitment for that. The next component are the online webinars. Um, the expectation is that you review three of our on-demand webinars um, that have been offered by ACRO. Um, two of them are required. One focuses on uh, the institutional planning aspect, and the second one deals with marketing and communication. The third one, uh, you have the choice from five options that we make available. Um, and then what happens is, is that you write up a reflection um, on the online webinars as it relates to your institution applying the principles that you've learned. Related to the field visits, um, the third aspect of the curriculum, there's actually three ways to complete the field visits. Uh, most people will do three traditional field visits at three different colleges or universities. The second option is to embed one of the ACRO uh, national or state conferences as one of the field visits by writing up um, the sessions that you've attended. And the third option, um, this may be uh, an option for people who may be in a more remote location or may have limits on travel, and we do permit um, a virtual visit. Um, not as rich as an in-person visit, but provides the flexibility um, for those learners. Let me talk a little bit more about the field visits. Um, first of all, um, every field visit is required to be a minimum of six hours um, on that campus. This gives you a chance to really uh, get some in-depth knowledge and make some uh, connections um, at those, during those visits. Um, the learner gets to select the three locations, um, and certainly the STEM EP team can help um, if people need recommendations or are looking for certain institution types. You can, that's the benefit about this, is that you can pick institutions that you would consider to be your peers, your competitors, or institutions that you would like to learn more about, depending on what type of institution you're working at right now. Uh, essentially, we require that the six hours be comprised of two hours in admissions, two hours in the registrar's area, and then two hours in another enrollment management office. But we always strongly encourage financial aid. Um, but other people have done institutional research, marketing, retention, student success. Um, it depends on what is under the umbrella of enrollment management at that particular institution. So that's the field visit. 
Um, then the final component um, are the, and I, I should go back with the field visits real quick. So those have a written report um, that gets submitted for each of the visits. Again, it's a reflection on what was learned. Um, and often individuals will tie in the content from the webinars um, or some of their other readings um, in terms of applying those skills. And then the final part of MEP is the capstone project. And the capstone project, there are three options. Um, there's the research model, there's the literature review, and then there's the enrollment project. So I'll talk about how those three differ. Um, the most popular option is the research model. This one, um, the learner has to choose either a retention study or a prospective uh, new student study. Um, I would say that probably 90% of the people completing their capstone are doing a project uh, within their own institution. So it allows them to kill two birds with one stone. Uh, by, uh, you know, completing something for the program, but also uh, having something practical uh, to implement um, and to share on their own campus. Um, the population has to be at least 100 or more students, and typically we'd like them to be in a control group um, and an experimental group in order to, to validate the study. Um, this project, along with most of them, require um, a peer review where you would be submitting your project before you um, officially submit it for review to a peer um, in the SEMEP program or it can be a colleague in the field um, and then you integrate their feedback into your final uh, submission. The second option uh, is the literature review and the literature review um, uh, learners will select a primary text. Uh, usually this is one of the primary ACRO uh, publication, um, and they write a one-page assessment um, on that, and then they research three articles uh, from the field of uh, strategic enrollment management and then complete a, a full annotated bibliography on each of those, again, connecting them to the primary text. And again, a peer review is also uh, incorporated into that, and then we also ask on this one for the candidate uh, to articulate three to five career goals. Um, as it relates to beyond the uh, achievement of the endorsement, what their, what their plans are thereafter. The third option is the most versatile of the capstone project, designed to provide some flexibility if somebody can't do the, the study uh, and is not interested in the literature review. Oftentimes this may be an enrollment plan, but not necessarily. Um, it, it again is a custom research option and we do require an abstract or an outline in advance so that we can approve your proposed project just to make sure that it meets the rigor and the expectations um, and is similar uh, to the other capstone options. Uh, again, still a peer review is incorporated into this and then we also ask for an institutional profile um, just to get a sense of, uh, of the college or university. In terms of the time commitment, um, you can see on this chart that we total up the hours to be just over 90 hours. Um, and the program is designed to be completed in 12 to 18 months. Um, I would say that most are taking the 18 month um, period um, just because of life and the busyness of all of uh, us as practitioners. Um, but the two largest components are going to be that essentials of STEM, which is that eight hours a week for four weeks, again, highly structured, and then the field visits, primarily because of the time to set up, complete them, and to do the field visit report. So this includes all of the assignments, all of the time, um, just to kind of give you that. So again, if you divided that out, you know, you're, you're not going to be spending a lot of time per month, but you do need to make progress, um, you know, through the 18 months. And um, the SEMEP staff, we monitor uh, progress and stay in touch with all of our learners as they're at the different stages of completion. In terms of the evaluation method, so again, there are, there are no grades assigned. Uh, there's no official transcript issued. Um, but the work is reviewed by ACRO colleagues. We have a team of professionals that um, review, and, and most of the submissions um, are reviewed by at least two individuals. And then we offer feedback. Um, and sometimes we do request and require uh, revision um, if we feel the assignment is uh, or submission is maybe not up to our expectations uh, in terms of uh, the quality that we're looking for. Um, 
But again, this is just a way to, again, validate that, you know, the learning outcomes have been achieved for the different components. Um, and again, the same process will be used in all, um, all of the assignments, with the exception of the Essentials of STEM online course. Um, that's handled by a different faculty who are instructing that particular online course. In terms of program support, we now offer monthly chats so learners can kind of check in, ask questions, connect with other learners, um, and those are scheduled at various times throughout the diff uh, each month. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we provide assistance if you need help with field visits, and then we also can help with guiding individuals on their capstone topic or project. Um, and then oftentimes we will select uh, outstanding capstones to be encouraged uh, to be published um, in ACRO's journal, College and University. In fact, one of our learners, Jennifer McClure, um, just had her capstone. Uh, it will be in the next issue that will hit your mailboxes here very soon. Um, and then we also extend invitations for SEMEP graduates to join ACRO committees and present at conferences and, again, continue to write. Uh, and publish. And new for this year, we'll be having a meet and greet at the STEM conference. If any of you are coming to the STEM conference and you're not yet a learner, you can join us on Sunday at 4 o'clock for a gathering and meet some of the current learners and some of our graduates who will be attending the STEM conference. And in conclusion, I want to let you know that we're offering a special offer today for all of the webinar participants. If uh, two or more of you from the same institution um, enroll this month, then each of you will get a 10% discount. Um, that's a savings of nearly $180 per person. And if you're interested, um, just email um, the SEMEP email account, which is listed there. Mention this webinar. Just make sure you do that before the end of the month, and then we'll assist you uh, with the billing and payment and getting you registered and getting started um, in the program. So. Um, the final two components I want to just mention as I, uh, is the recognition. Um, you'll see some screenshots here of the SEMEP National Registry. This one features Rob Garrett. So once you graduate, we will put a picture um, along with some information and note what year you graduated and link to your LinkedIn profile if you have that. And then our learners are indicating their uh, STEM endorsement under certifications within their LinkedIn profile. So again, it gives you that visibility um, in the job market and to other colleagues in our field that you have that, uh, that you're endorsed by ACRO uh, and went through the um, STEM EP program. And then we also will send you a printed certificate that you can, uh, again, display in your office uh, that will indicate that you're an endorsed enrollment uh, professional. So thank you very much, and I'll turn it back over to Kimberly. Well, wonderful, and thank you again, Christopher. You have shared some uh, really helpful information, uh, and the discount offer sounds like a really great opportunity. Um, okay, so our next presenter is Dr. Clayton Smith. Uh, Dr. Smith is an associate professor at the University of Windsor. He has spent 31 years engaged in higher education administration at four post-secondary institutions in Canada and in the United States. He currently serves as director of ACRO's SIM conference and is a senior ACRO consultant. Clayton, welcome, and thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to share a little bit about ACRO's upcoming SIM conference. Take it away. Thanks very much, Kimberly. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, first of all. Uh, I remember when I was looking at professional development for enrollment management <clears throat> more than a few years back. Uh, and uh, some EP wasn't there. and, and uh, the SEM conference was just getting started, and uh, even some of the literature, which Wayne will talk to you a bit about, we were we were just starting to develop, and it's 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 so amazing how much stuff is out there today. So what I'm going to do, if I could, is to talk to you a little bit about the SEM conference itself. Um, we are in the 27th SEM conference now. That's a long. That's a, that's a lot of conferences. Um, and, and as a result, lots of things have changed. But uh, in the past year, what we have done is we've done, first of all, an environmental scan of the conference to find out you know, what people like, what people want to see changed, uh, what's going on with some of the related meetings, uh, how to better meet the professional development needs of ACRO members as well as, as others that might be uh, in, be they Canada, be abroad, or be in different sectors, those kinds of things. So we essentially did an apply SEM to SEM, if you will. And in doing so, we convened a couple of advisory groups. One is called the uh, 
the SEM advisory group, uh, and it involves a lot leading SEM people from all over North America to give us some advice. And another is one particularly focused on community colleges, because we were seeing an increasing number of community colleges with an interest in enrollment management, many of which were choosing to come to the SEM conference. So we reached out to them, and we listened a lot to many others uh, throughout the year, and we changed things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through it and uh, certainly be able to answer your questions at the end. So the, the, the screen in front of you really just talks about the highlights. Uh, special opportunities for individuals, small groups, and institutional teams. And I'll come back to talk a little bit about the team bit at the end, because teams are an important way in which the SEM conference really supports the professional development of, of campus-based institutional enrollment management. Uh, more on that in a bit. Uh, it's going to be programming for new and experienced SEM professionals. So we always ask our presenters, you know, who are, who are you focusing on? And what we find is that some, are, some of our presentations are you know, for people who are just new to the field. Now, new to the field might be that you have 10 years of experience in a related office and are new to enrollment management. Maybe you're a faculty member that has just been assigned an enrollment management committee responsibilities, or perhaps even a, a new provost who uh, is finding enrollment management within uh, the portfolio. So uh, but we look to make sure that the sessions meet the needs of various types of folks at various stages in their, in their professional growth. It, there are specialized tracks for community college and Canadian professionals. We have lots of folks from Canada. Uh, I myself work at a Canadian institution these days. Uh, and uh, they represent important constituencies in the overall enrollment management dialogue. And to some extent, enrollment management done a bit differently in those sectors. It's uh, exposure and access to leading enrollment managers. So we'll bring folks to the conference who we think are some of the leading thought leaders as well as the leading practitioners to, uh, to, uh, to share us, uh, to share some things with us. And lastly, we have a, a bunch of exhibitors and corporate presentations as well. We think that uh, the world doesn't stop at the college or university border, that there are, there are things that we can learn from the exhibitors and the various corporate folks as well as some tools that will help us as we you know, go forward with, uh, with, our, with our discussions on campus. So th those are the highlights. The uh, featured speakers this year, we, we, we do three keynotes and, and, uh, and something a little bit extra that and I'll, and I'll get to in a minute. But Carlos Salermo is the Vice President of Data Analytics at Strata Education Network. And he's going to speak on public perceptions of the value of higher education. We think that's a hot topic. We think our, our, our members want to hear about that, want to talk about it. And so we will focus on that. Uh, and we have a roundtable on that topic as well. Uh, Dr. Tricia Seifert is the head of the Department of Education and associate professor in adult and higher edu education program at Montana State. She also has faculty rank at the University of Toronto. So she, she has worked in both Canada and the US. And she's done a lot of work studying the whole area of student affairs and services and how that crosses over and connects to and supports the overall enrollment management on our respective campuses. And in particular, just recently released an article in our SEM quarterly that talks about transactional versus transformational type of approaches, which we think will spark a lot of conversation. And then we have Jeff Salingo from the New York Times, uh, also Washington Post columnist who's uh, you know, he's a LinkedIn top 10 influencer. And uh, he's going to talk a lot about the fast-changing economy and how do we imagine our college and university changing into the future. So a bit of a futuristic uh, keynote. The uh, inaugural SEM Institute is, is, is pretty hot. I, I'm pretty big on it. I'm one of the faculty members that will be speaking to it, along with Christine Curlin, uh, a senior acro consultant. And, uh, this is something we've, we've toyed around with a few years, but we felt it was really important to put right in the SEM conference a full day experience about this thing called enrollment management. And so the institute is designed for, we have about 50 or so people signed up at the moment. It can go a little bigger than that. We're hoping not too much bigger, keep it a, a manageable group, but still of substance. And so we're going to discuss the changing landscape and various enrollment challenges we face. We're going to talk about a, creating a baseline understanding of SEM, which is really important as you go into the SEM conference, that you have this essence of what SEM is and what its key 
uh, key components are. We're going to introduce SEM planning because we know that's important and many of the reasons that people come to the SEM conference is to learn a bit more about SEM planning and we'll introduce the ACRO SEM planning framework. Uh, talk a bit about organizational dynamics. How is it that your organization at, on campus is set up, and how does that influence your ability to put SEM uh, in, in place, this, this kind of getting everybody on the same page idea? We'll share how to implement the, the SEM process framework. We'll suggest ways to enhance this, the, con, the SEM conference experience itself. And lastly, we'll provide a toolkit for those that attend uh, so that they have the things to take home and things they can take out when they need. Uh, it's, again, it's a Sunday on the, at the conference. It runs all day, 8.30 to 4.30, after which the conference kicks off. Next, we have a bunch of pre-conference workshops as well that are offered at the same time as the SEM Institute in the afternoon portion of that day. So if you're going to the SEM Institute, you wouldn't be doing these. But many people find this to be of, of great value as well, particularly those who are, who are, who are more experienced. And so we have a variety of workshops here. You'll see them um, managing for success, how to thrive in the age of outcomes. And you'll hear from my colleague uh, Wayne in just a few minutes, and he's uh, one of the presenters for that. Uh, planning and assessment, organizational structure and dynamics, uh, student success, uh, big one on data, and then the art and science of building your class. Again, this is offered in the afternoon on the first day, the Sunday. We have uh, co-located workshops available at the SEM conference as well. Uh, they are Registrar 101 and FERPA, and then Foreign Credentials Evaluation Workshop, which is, which is available too. So here you have brief descriptions of both of them, full-day workshops available within the conference. And for those people who choose to participate in those workshops, they have the opportunity to uh, uh, maybe add a one-day SEM registration to that uh, to complement the, the workshops. We have new this year uh, a two-part senior SEM leadership forum. We think it's really important that we provide a place and a dialogue for the chief enrollment officers that serve at our institutions to discuss the things that concern them. So here the, the, the variety of topics uh, is, is not all finalized yet, but it, but it will focus on the kinds of issues that concern the senior enrollment manager on your campus. Uh, if you have uh, kind of an in with that person, feel free to encourage them to join us. It, it, again, this is likely to be a 50-ish size, uh, size group. The SEM team experience I referred to earlier is for institutions to bring three or more people. And so we offer kind of a, um, an, a value added for, for those folks. And it works like this. Approximately two weeks prior to the conference, we're going to match uh, each team with a senior SEM expert who's going to reach out to the team and talk about how to customize the SEM experience at the conference in Phoenix. On Sunday, they'll gather in what we're calling a team huddle where the senior SEM expert and the, and the visiting team from the, the campus get a chance to meet each other and to uh, personalize uh, and to talk a bit about uh, how to take the next few days at the conference. On Monday, there'll be a SEM team end of day review. So after you've been out all at the sessions and the keynote and all those kinds of things, it's a chance to come back together to reflect a bit. On Tuesday, there's an all team reception. This is by invitation. Uh, so the teams that are there, they'll receive an invitation to come to a reception and, and meet the other teams, which, which we think is great. And then lastly, uh, on Wednesday, uh, the end of conference, we have a Taking SEM Home session, which is kind of after having done all this, we've learned all these great things, we've, we've been engaged as a team, where, how, do we, how do we bring it home? How do we make it real? How do we make sure that the first time we, we try SEM is, is, is the time it sticks and, and, and gets going and so forth? So anyhow, so but the important point here is that on Friday, October 13th, we're going to sort of draw a line in the sand. And so for those folks who have registered by that time, and they have three or more people, they'll be invited to participate in the team experience. So what I want to end with is just I want to see you at SEM in Phoenix on October 29 to November 1, 2017. And I look forward to you joining us.
Wonderful. Thanks. Cool. Well, thank you. Thank you, Clayton. And again, thank you for taking time out of your schedule to share a little bit about ACRO's upcoming STEM conference. Um, I am personally looking forward to attending the conference, and I, I hope that many of today's uh, webinar participants will also be able to attend. Um, just for the audience, a quick reminder, uh, if, you want, if you want to uh, secu uh, post questions, feel free to do that in the chat. Um, but with that, I will pivot to our next presenter. Uh, our final presenter is Dr. Wayne Sigler. Dr. Sigler is nationally respected, uh, nationally respected enrollment manager, management practitioner, consultant, author, and speaker. Dr. Sigler served as vice president for enrollment management at George Mason University um, uh, from July 2012 to July 2014. Prior to joining George Mason, he served as director of admissions at the University of Minnesota Twin Cities for 20 years, building an undergraduate admissions program that is regarded as one of the elite programs in both the Big Ten and in the United States. Dr. Sigler has been a senior consultant with Acro Consulting since 2006. Dr. Sigler, welcome, and thanks for taking time. I will pitch it over to you. Thank you, Kimberly, and hello to everyone. We, we thank you for joining us in today's webinar. Uh, in my part of the webinar, I'm going to briefly discuss the, the new book, which is, just came out in May, uh, SEMCOR Concepts. Building Blocks for Institutional and Student Success. Uh, I'd like to cover uh, who the SEM Core Concepts book was written for and to give you a brief overview of the topics uh, covered in the book. Okay, the first uh, thing I'd like to, to touch on is that it's three type of things. The SEM Core Concepts book was designed for busy professionals with an overview of uh, SEM. Uh, and I might point out that uh, the forerunner of this book was called the SEM Primer, and that was published back in 1997. And uh, obviously, uh, a lot has happened in the SEM profession uh, since that time. We've, uh, ACRO had a lot of comments of, from people that they really in, in benefited from the SEM Primer and uh, wanted a, a new one. And uh, the SEM Core Concepts is really uh, designed to, to fill that need. It a, has about 50 pages of text and uh, is designed uh, as a relatively quick overview of the SEM profession, and uh, I think also uh, people, after they do the quick overview, the, the high-level uh, concepts of it, they can go back and drill down into the text to, to get a deeper understanding. Uh, it, it contains the state-of-the-art SEM core concepts and best practices. And, and finally, uh, I want to stress this, that uh, it was written uh, with uh, consultation with what I call an all-star cast of practitioners. They, they're many of the top thought leaders and practitioners in the STEM profession, and there were around 12 people involved in this, people that are, are, are extremely knowledgeable, very busy, and they were generous with their time because they wanted to, uh, to make certain that this is a publication that will really serve uh, the members of our of ACRO and our profession. Okay. The, the store, the STEM concepts can also uh, really help install an institution-wide understanding of, of STEM. Uh, the, there's a lot of challenges that higher education currently faces that really makes it important that the leadership of, of all levels of an institution really fully understand STEM. Uh, there's a lot of different understandings around the, the country and even among institutions and on many campuses about what SEM is and what it is not. And this will help build that institution-wide understanding of SEM that we think is, is so important. 
this is in many ways uh, an enrollment manager's uh, best friend because uh, it will really help say to uh, the leadership and various members of the campus the things that, that he or she really thinks is very important so that they can have that common understanding. Okay, it, it's designed uh, to really uh, serve a variety of, of leaders. It will acquaint uh, non-STEM institutional leaders to STEM concepts, approaches, and common technology. And uh, this is what I referred to a minute ago as building that core base of understanding throughout your institution. It will help introduce STEM to new professionals uh, it'll be a wonderful training tool uh, for when you bring in new persons on your staff that will uh, help them understand what STEM is and is not. It's a great refresher for experienced STEM professionals. I have, as Kimberly had pointed out, have been in the uh, STEM profession for, for many, many years, but I also find it necessary to go back what I might call to the basics and uh, really just make certain that I am in, in, in my work that I'm hitting on all of the core concepts and that I'm refreshing my understanding of those. So I, I think some experienced professionals will really uh, uh, benefit from this book as well. I think it will help some leaders to benchmark their programs with the key components of a first-rate STEM program. I think all of us want to make sure that we are keeping up, uh, and uh, this, is, this is a good way to, to, to uh, help with that. I, I like a, a quote by the uh, famous comedian philosopher, pop philosopher, Will Rogers, and he said, even if you're on the right track, you'll get run over if you just sit there. And I've tried to remember that my, my whole career, and I think this uh, using this new book as a benchmarking will help make certain that we stay on the right track. It's an ideal guide for campus professional uh, workshops, and it's an excellent resource uh, for graduate academic courses. Okay, let me uh, give you, uh, uh, with three slides, uh, a little overview of the topics covered in the, the publication. The first is, again, is a definition of STEM and examples of what it's not. And I've, I've talked about that three different times now, but because of there isn't a, a, often, a, even on a particular campus, a common understanding of STEM, it's really important that everybody understands what STEM is designed to do and what it is not. It's, it's, for instance, it's not a recruiting plan. Uh, it definitely informs the, rec the recruiting plan, but it's a much broader, higher level uh, overview of, of, of what SEM is, and it's basically designed to be an over uh, campus-wide effort to get everyone on the same page of reaching the university's goals for enrollment and student success. The Evolution of SEM, which was written by Stan Henderson, who is a, a longtime practitioner of, of STEM uh, and a former president of ACRO, includes the developmental stages that provide the building blocks for the current best practices of the profession. Uh, I think the, the building block concept is very important because if you think of building block as building a, a really strong foundation for a, a new house, or renovating a current one, uh, house obviously being a metaphor for our programs, it's a, a really good way to understand where we came from and how we got there today and how these best practices came uh, into being. And then finally, it goes into an, an overview of uh, SEM's most compelling related challenges today, which are obviously uh, many. Okay, it will also, it will provide a, a, a very good uh, overview of best practices for in implementing and achieving 
the core purposes of SEM. Uh, it will also talk about uh, SEM and the institutional culture, and that part was uh, drawn a lot uh, about what are called the four orientations of uh, SEM. Uh, our colleague uh, Dave Kalsbeek out at uh, the uh, University in uh, Chicago, uh, DePaul University, has been a real wonderful author on this and speaker. And uh, we've really drawn quite a bit of this chapter from his work. And then finally, uh, on this point, uh, a planning model and roadmap for transforming an institution into a top flight SAM organization. And I think uh, you, the, the reason why you're on this webinar and why you, you're in this profession is you really are committed to doing a, a wonderful job uh, every day at your institution and making certain that your programs are top flight. And this will help you understand what a top flight institution, uh, a SEM program looks like. It also talks about the essential concepts for SEM leadership. Uh, we all know that leadership is important in any organization. Uh, I have a, a colleague at, from a former institution, a chemistry professor, that said SEM or leadership is very similar to a chemical catalyst. The catalyst determines the direction and speed of the reaction, and I think those of us who uh, want to be or consider ourselves some leaders, this is a role that we really do uh, need to, to, to play to make certain that, that, that things go in the right direction. And then finally, uh, one of my favorite parts is taking control or better control of your enrollment destiny. And I think the theme there is uh, play more offense than, than defense. And uh, if, you're, you, if you follow sports at all, you, you know that you, top teams really play great defense and offense, but there's a real difference. Um, if a, a team is unduly playing defense, they're trying to stop bad things from happening. But when you're taking better control of your enrollment destiny, you're, trying, you're working to make good things happen and make certain proactively that you feel – uh, better about your, 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 your institution's uh, situation and you tr working actively to make it, uh, it work well. And I, as I said before, is there's just a great feeling. Uh, I think whether you're an athlete or as a leader in the SEM profession, when you're really uh, taking better control of your, your destiny. Okay, the final parts there, there's an internal enrollment management assessment template that I think you'll really uh, find very helpful as you're trying to uh, benchmark your uh, institution's STEM program against best practices. Our, my colleague, uh, Dr. Clayton Smith, uh, along with Bob Bontracker, who was uh, one of our longtime uh, colleagues, uh, wrote that, and I think that you really will find this helpful. And then finally, a, a, a SAM resources list, which will point you to uh, if you, where you want to go into more detail and really help you un see what's out there uh, in acro land uh, for, for that. Uh, if you want to purchase the SEM core concepts, uh, you can do that at bookstore at acro.org. And I want to point out there is a, a, a discount available for bulk pur purchases. This is a great book. Um, we're finding institutions want to send it, for instance, to their deans and their senior leadership. And it's, um, I think by going, taking advantage of the uh, bulk uh, rates, this will make this uh, you know, a, a, a good way to do that. At this point, I want to say thank you for uh, tuning in and listening about this new book. And I'll turn it back to Kimberly.
Thank you. And thank you so much, Dr. Sigler, uh, for sharing a glimpse into uh, SimCore com uh, concepts. I already purchased my copy and, again, would strongly encourage today's webinar participants to consider this book for, the, for their library for all the wonderful reasons you've provided. Um, and so we, we do have time for questions, and a few have come in since we have um, been uh, on air. And so uh, I have one question that I'll ask, and then I want to give Clayton an opportunity um, to share uh, something additional with the group. But the first question is uh, for Christopher. Um, and so as it relates to the field study uh, requirement, are, are, are students responsible for securing schools for the field study requirement? or are these schools associated with the SIN EP program already? Right, great question. Uh, thank you for that uh, opportunity to talk about that. So for field visits, um, the learner is expected to make their own contact with institutions, uh, but we do have institutions that we can call on that um, have um, great uh, SEM uh, operations that we can uh, reach out to. Uh, we try not to obviously inundate the same institution because it is quite a commitment to host a learner for six hours and keep them engaged and occupied in learning. Um, but usually we work one-on-one -on -one with each learner to identify what would be the best uh, possibilities uh, for field visits. Not every school will say yes, so I always recommend that learners have a backup list of institutions. Some learners will also pair field visits with the SEM or ACRO conferences, because if they're already traveling, let's say, to Phoenix, then they might see what institutions might be there that they could visit, um, and that way they kind of are saving on the travel cost by combining those visits. Great question. Thank you. Yeah, great point. Wonderful. Okay, so the next couple of questions pertain to the SIM conference and the rates. Uh, and so I'm going to uh, pitch this over to Clayton. And so the first question, uh, are there scholarships available for first-time conference attendees? Thanks, Kimberly. Uh, as, it, as it turns out, uh, there isn't. Uh, what we have is uh, redu reductions in the disc in the rates that, uh, that members would pay uh, for if there's one, there's two, there's three of them, uh, and they, the, the, it gets uh, lower, if you will, for, for each. So the, the bigger the team, the more the discount. Uh, and sure. there's also a, a by September 22 kind of early bird discount for folks that, that can, can make a decision that, that, that this is what they want to do and can move forward at that point. Otherwise, after that slightly different price and on-site uh, uh, is, uh, is a little bit higher than that. There is a student member rate. Uh, it's a 575 rate. I think that 575 if you do it by September 22 or 650 if you do it after that. So that, that option is, is available. So that's, that's a bit on the rates. Uh, does that answer your question, Kimberly? It does, and actually that was the second question. So the second question pertained to a graduate student discount rate. And so I know you just mentioned there's a student rate, and so is that for graduate students or just a student, a student rate in general? Uh, well, the, the student member one is kind of that student rate. Uh, but if there is a member, uh, if there's someone in who's, who's participating in the webinar today who has a specific question, I would welcome the opportunity to respond to it directly. Um, as I said before, we're applying SEM to SEM, and so we're looking at ways about how to ensure that the conference fee structure as well as its programming meets the needs of folks. And so in particular for a graduate student who might have an academic interest in SEM, maybe we can do some talking. Wonderful. And and I do think we have time. I think Clayton, you had something additional that you were want, that you wanted to share regarding a post conference uh, opportunity. I do, uh, and uh, and that's because when we put the slides together, this has not yet developed. So this is something that has just come come to our attention in the last few weeks. Uh, Arizona State University, it's a nearby university to where the Phoenix based uh, STEM conference will be held, has decided to offer a post. SEM conference experience. They're calling it the ACRO SEM site visit. It's on November 1. It runs from 1.30 to 4 p.m. at the ASU Tampa campus, and they're providing bus travel to and from, as well as a box lunch. 
includes uh, some over, an overview session as well as breakout sessions on things like data and technology, communications, college partnerships, and relationship management. In order to sign up, you can do it right on the ACRO site. Uh, and, uh, but I wanted to make sure folks were aware of that before we concluded the, 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 the webinar because you know, we want to make sure the travel arrangements can accommodate for that sort of thing. So we got great stuff before the conference, great conference, and now we can announce something post-conference to add to the dynamic qualities of the conference. Wonderful. All right. So I think I have one one final question, unless some another question comes in. But regarding the SimCore concepts, I'm assuming that this will be available for sale uh, at the Sim conference. Uh, you mentioned that there there's an opportunity. Um, vendors will be available. Will the book be available for purchase? Yes, it will. The, the Acro Publishing typically has a, a bookstore uh, on site for the Sim conference, so it'll be available at that point. All right, wonderful. Well, unless there are any additional questions, um, I, I just would like to thank uh, once again the presenters for taking time out of their busy schedules uh, to share uh, such wonderful information. And of course, I'd like to also thank the webinar uh, participants. Um, ACRO's next webinar, Solving the International in uh, institution code that will take place on Wednesday, October the 11th uh, from 2 to 3 p.m. And so with that, I again would like to thank everyone and wish you all uh, a great day. Have a great rest of the week. Thank you. Kimberly, this is Clayton. If I can just jump in one last time. Oh, sure. Please do. If there was a question that came to us uh, toward the end of the webinar about is there a hashtag for the SEM conference, and there is. It's, it's hashtag SEM17. So that will be the, the, the way we'll uh, communicate stuff to the folks that wish to be in that group. So I wanted, wanted to, to, to leave that with folks. And the, the other question was, do you have to come as a team? And the answer is no. Many people come to the SEM conference as a one or as a two or as a three, sometimes as a five. It doesn't matter. Uh, everyone has the opportunity to participate. Obviously, the SEM team experience is a unique thing uh, for the team members, but uh, come as a one if you'd like. Wow, wonderful. And thank you. I completely missed the last couple of questions that came in as I was starting to uh, to do my wrap-up close. And so uh, let me pause a minute and make sure going once, going twice. Uh, again, thank you all uh, for joining us and uh, for taking the time. This has been a wonderful webinar. Thank you all very much.